Today I'm going to show you how to get panoramics like this from an Epson 3880 without spending a lot of money. Hello everybody, this is Richard Cox of AlwaysPhotographing.com's video blog. Now, the Epson 3880 is a great printer, but it doesn't take rolled paper. And even if you could figure out a way to rig up a contraption so, it will, so you could feed it rolled paper, when it finishes printing a single print, it would eject the entire roll. There's no way to stop that. So you're limited to cut paper. And Epson specification says that the Epson 3880 only takes 17 by 22. Now this could be a problem because when you have a regular 35 millimeter DSLR image and you want to print it, you'd have to print it to 15 by 22, not 17 by 22. So if you want to get a 17 by 22, if you want to get a full 17 inches off the printer, you'd have to print to 17 by 25. Now you can buy third party paper that's 17 by 25, so you can get a full 35 millimeter print onto a single sheet of paper through the printer, but again, the Epson driver only supports, at least the specifications say the Epson driver only supports up to 17 by 22. So, we're going to show you how to change, how to change the specifications without buying any special software like RIP. Some RIP software will allow you to print longer, but you spend $600 for that. So we're going to show you how to do that using the printer driver from Epson and how to make your own paper from roll paper so you can put that through it as well. So let's say you can't find the, 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 your favorite paper in cut, but you can find it in a roll. Most paper you can get in 17 inch roll form. And the problem is, is that when you buy roll paper, the, out, the, the printer side is on the outside of the roll. So right now you are actually looking at the, the print side of the paper. The, the side that doesn't print on it is, is the underside. So you just can't roll this out onto a flat surface like this. Even if you wash it all you can, you find out that you're going to scratch it or there's going to be an imperfection. I mean, I've washed this and I, I um, tried to roll it out and cut it and rolling it out just, just scratched the paper. So I ended up building contraption so I can actually cut this paper. I made this quite simple. It's, um, I'll show you, I'll, I'll give you a close look at that in a second. And then I have this paper cutter and a ruler. Now, the final cut in order to print has to be, is critical. It has to be very square. So that's why I got one of these guys. It's just put it in there and it makes a nice straight cut onto your um, paper so that when you feed it, it doesn't feed crooked. And if it feeds crooked, it'll jam because the paper, the printer will try to print straight. And what will happen is as it's coming, the, the print will start going like that and then it'll run into the side of the carriage and it'll jam. Or if it's off a little bit, you might find that your print is, your print's printing crooked. So in order to do that, we use this. Now all the information I'm going to give you is on the website, so you can look it up there, alwaysphotographing.com, and you'll need a paper cutter. Got this one on eBay for around about 30 bucks. Went to, went to Home Depot and built this. The only requirement for this was that it was bigger than the paper that was going to suspend and taller this way. So I measured this before I went. I actually brought, I actually brought this with me to Home Depot to make sure that I could fit it all. I didn't want to carry on that. And so it consists of one dowel, two Y bolts. Now the bolts, not the screws, because the screws, um, the screws are uh, designed to go into, into a um, screw in without a, with a small pilot hole, but they're not really designed. You want the bolt. And then I had four nuts, four washers. And what I did was I, I cut two holes for the size of the bolt, one here, one there. I actually drew a line here, as you can see, to measure it out, make sure they're, make sure they're the same on each side. Cut them, then I used a wood screw, one inch, and the drill, I drilled down 
just enough so that the bolt and the washer with the nut cleared cleared the um cleared the the bottom of this so that you this wouldn't touch it so that you wouldn't scratch anything also it, it, it sits nice and flat so washer and that's nut washer washer nut tighten those down put that and that's how I made that and then scissors to cut the rough cut and then this to cut a more exacting cut now we have that we can actually um, take the paper and we can um, take the paper out of the wrapper being careful not to blow it too much or destroy too much on the ground but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we'll put this over here as well and we're going to put this onto the roll take the Put that in there like that. Get those out of the way as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure out 36 inches of paper. And I'm making myself some extra room here. So 30, 38, so 40. So I might do about to here. It doesn't matter. The extra will go away. I mean, the printer will eject it. So the other thing is, is that since it's curled, the ends of the paper tend to get more caught up with the, um, with the printer. So what happens is as the end of the, as the end of it comes out, it, it, it grabs the end of the, the cartridge and you'll find that it picks up any of the extra ink on the, on the print head. So it's good to leave um, more at the either end so that when you print it, it, um, it actually will print you, you get a streak that you might get a small streak at the beginning, but if you leave enough margin, you can then um, cut that. And then on the other end, you can cut that as well. So we have a sheet of paper. And then we take this guy. And what we want to do is make sure that one end is completely s square. And that way, when we when we cut when we feed the paper into the printer it will cut it will um it will feed straight it won't you won't have any issues with the um you should not have any issues with the paper if you if it's perfectly square i'll show you how to feed it when we get upstairs so that you can make sure it's, it, it feeds square but the the key part in order to do that is to um is to cut it square as well. So make sure that's flush with that. And then I just simply make a cut. And therefore that ends perfectly square and we're ready to go. We are in Lightroom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the print I want to print. And then I'm going to go over to uh, my printer menu and then I'll go and select, um, I usually go and select my paper profile. I have a presets and it's set for the Polar Pearl Metallic um, from Red River, 16 bit output, that's on the Mac. And um, then I'll come over to here into page setup. And 
under paper size I'll select manage custom sizes I'll create a new one the plus and I'll give it a dimension so you don't have to worry about I mean you can go 17 by 300 if you want I did this because I'm going to show you that when you select the printer it'll automatically set the maximum possible size that that paper can be which is 37.4 inches so then what I'll do um, for some reason they want 0.12 inches all around his borders so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here and I name that I usually call it cut 17 by 37.4 inches and then I'll say OK and then I'll go OK here now as you can see the paper has been resized with 17 by 34 inches long but um, the print size is much smaller than that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into layout and I want an inch border all the way around this so I can sign it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the top, I'm going to make it 1.5 inches. That gives me a half an inch at the top of the paper to um, a half an inch at the top of the paper to, to catch any ink that might come off because of the curl when it starts to print. I've seen that happen a couple of times. So I make that 1.5 inches, that gives me a half an inch at the top, the leading edge at the top, to start printing. And then what I'll do is I'll just put the left and right margins at one inch. And I really don't care about the bottom one because I've cut more paper than I need. So um, what I'll end up doing now is I'll bring the height all the way up as far as it will go and the width all the way up as far as it will go. And as you can see, that down the bottom is not enough room. But what? But the paper actually is longer. When it ejects it, I'll have plenty of room to cut it. But the important part is the leading edge. The top is the first part to come out. So Lightroom says the top corresponds to the first piece of first part of the paper out of the printer. So I know I got an inch and a half to print before I actually hit the margin there. And um, and so that's how you set that up. Now we're ready to print. I'll go get the paper. Okay, now I'm ready to print. So what we'll do is we'll come over here, turn on the printer, extend that all the way out. Bring that all the way out as far as it'll go here. And while that's warming up, we'll go get the paper. I should probably want to. Move that all the way over. We're going to need that space. Now this is the straight edge. This is the place, the well, I'd, edge I haven't cut yet, but I will eventually. So what we're going to do is we're going to, literally we're going to try to hold this as we feed it into the paper. And the idea is you want to make sure that it, um, make sure you put very little pressure there, but you want to make sure that it's touching all the way across the bottom and make sure that it'll feed correctly. And this doesn't have to be taut, taut, but it should be, should be enough so that it sits on the paper like that. Okay, and so what I'll end up doing is I put this up against the wall so I can use the um, the side of the wall to help guide that in. And then what I'll end up doing is I come over here and I'll hit the print button. Now it'll take a while to feed that up, but now all I have to do is sit this like this and wait for the printer to start.
gonna do its thing and there it starts printing. So I just finished trimming this up downstairs. Now you have a 17 by 34 inch panoramic from an Epson 3880. And um, without spending extra money on software. So if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. And if you want to leave some comments down below, please do so. Any ideas you want for future shows, let me know. And um, hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Good day.